My name is Alan Olson, and uh, I, um, I've been a lifelong rock collector. And um, oh, about uh, 15 years ago, um, I went to Montana on a uh, an agate collecting uh, trip, and I got to know some uh, local folks uh, in eastern Montana. And uh, I um, I was able to buy a lease to a piece of private land, a ranch, and um, go out and collect dinosaur fossils off of it. And uh, I spent a dozen uh, summers between 1996 and 2007 uh, in the Badlands uh, collecting, collecting dinosaurs. Interesting place, Hell Creek. Um, the Hell Creek Formation of Eastern Montana is, is uh, most people recognize it as the Badlands and some, uh, some call it the Makoshika. Uh, that's another name for it. Um, it's uh, the sediments there represent the uh, the last age of dinosaurs, um, the end of the Mesozoic. Um, it was a time when uh, the last great uh, uh, major extinction uh, was happening right before uh, what many people would call the current one. <laughs> so, at the time, about uh, <clears throat> probably about two thirds of all life disappeared. Um, on the land in the sea, uh, the dinosaurs all vanished, the ammonites all went away. Uh, quite a few other animals suffered hugely uh, from the microscopic to the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the gigantic. When it was all done, uh, the world looked very different. But, uh, but in the meantime, the, uh, the dinosaurs that lived in, the, uh, in, the, uh, the, uh, in eastern Montana in the Hell Creek Formation uh, were buried and their bones were preserved and minerals um, seep through the ground along with the water and harden those bones into stone and now we find uh, dinosaur skeletons littering the Badlands. They're really quite fragile for the most part. Uh, they're uh, a lot of, they, they've been through a process called permineralization where the, uh, the spaces inside the bone have been filled with rock but the bone remains very much bone so when they're exposed to the wind and the rain and the water they, uh, they tend to weather away pretty quickly. There's um, a very short window of time from the time that they that they are exposed to the time that they're um, they're little little chunks of bone, what I used to refer to as bone meal, uh, all over the ground. When you uh, go out and walk through the Badlands, one of the first things that you realize is, is that many of the little pieces of rock and the gravel that you're walking on are actually pieces of dinosaur fossil. And of course, it isn't just dinosaurs that are there. It's uh, like in most in most assemblages of of, uh, of fossils. There's usually a whole uh, community of animals there, and, and that's true uh, in eastern Montana, where we not only find the dinosaurs, uh, Triceratops and Montosaurus and T-Rex, but we also find uh, many alligators, crocodiles, turtles, uh, amphibians, birds, small mammals. So um, anyways, I got to spend a dozen summers out uh, out in this, this, this wonderland. Um, it was all private ranch land. I started off with, with one ranch. It was... Um, not big as ranches go out there. It was 17 sections, and each section is a square mile, so it was 17 square miles of land. But that's not large as they go out there. The land is very, very poor, and it takes uh, a lot of acreage to raise cows. It's like a different planet there. There's, uh, there's almost no trees, uh, and there's very little over about that high growing. It's, it's all very, very short, uh, short grass prairie, a lot of sage. Um, Badlands breaks um, are all over the hills where there's nothing growing. And uh, you can see these big, beautiful colored stripes across the hills and balancing rocks. And it's, uh, it, in its own barren way, it's a beautiful place. I spent a dozen summers there. The first two years I was, uh, I was able to camp. The first year I, uh, I, was, uh, I was out in 96. I, um, I camped uh, for five and a half months in uh, two tents <laughs> uh, out, on the, uh, out on a cow pasture. Um, it was a dry camp, so I had to go into the ranchers, to, uh, the ranch house, to uh, to get water, and um, it was uh, it was a wonderful experience. Camping conditions are difficult. Um, the uh, the wind blows all of the time, and since there is no trees or tree cover, there's there's really nothing to stop it. Uh, the first year I went through five tents that were destroyed by the wind. That I'd come back from a day of fossil hunting and. Everything would be down in the coulee, and and uh, and I have to go gather it all back up again and set what was left of the tent back up and and deal with that. Some of the some of the fossils, logistically, they were huge. Uh, a large a large femur can be four feet long and as big around as a fence post and weigh 150 pounds. Um, it's not the kind of thing that I can move by myself frequently. It's uh, a lot of these things I had to get help to do. But um, and that and as they got bigger, I mean, the scale of some of the stuff was just ridiculous. 
Um, a Triceratops skull can be seven feet long and four feet around at the frill. And by the time that it's plastered with even a minimal amount of sediments left on it from the field, it can, it can still be more than way, way over a ton, 2,000 to 3,000 pounds. Uh, and that sort of thing requires a front end loader to move. Um, there's just no other way to do it. So, um, yeah, some of the stuff is, is just ridiculously huge. <laughs> um, I collected a shoulder blade that was five feet long. Um, I collected a Triceratops horn that was uh, three and a half feet long. It was like a traffic cone. This is a Triceratops horn. Um, it's, a brow horn from uh, it's a brow horn from Triceratops. Um, it's from over the eye. Um, they all, uh, the saying in fossil, among fossil collectors uh, is that every fossil is broken and every fossil is incomplete. Um, it's just the nature of things um, uh, to, to come out that way after being buried this long. So consequently, there is a certain amount of what we call prep work, uh, preparation, fossil preparation that has to be done to them. And um, with this one, um, I started off by opening up the jacket and cleaning off um, the extra loose soil that came along with the jacket uh, that came off very easily. Um, when I got that off, I found that there were um, chunks of rock stuck on it that had to be removed. And for that, I used uh, a tool we call an air scribe, which is a little pneumatic uh, uh, jackhammer about the size of a ballpoint pen. And it's very, very gentle and very good for taking off uh, those sorts of things. And it did a really effective job of removing the rock off, the extra rock off of this. And this is a this is an Admatosaurus vertebrate. It's been completely restored. Um, it's a, it's a very nice one. It's from the backbone of of Admatosaurus. Um, there's been a few places on here that were missing little chips and pieces. Let's see here. Oh yeah, back along here that had to be replaced. Um, but you know, um, this vertebrae looked very much like this horn I just showed you uh, a minute ago uh, before I put the paint on it. I had, a little, I had a spot down in here that had to be replaced that was gone altogether. Um, there were some little pieces along here that had to be replaced and up along here. And uh, this little edge here was gone. This one was actually fairly complete and it wasn't, it wasn't missing any of its processes or anything like that, but it, it had a number of small chips that were gone out of it along here that had to be replaced and painted. It looks, they look so much better when they're whole. <laughs> it's just, it's a remarkable, it's a remarkable transformation that they go through like that. Um, from, uh, and especially when you see them when they look like when they, uh, when they were found, like, I remember this one was, uh, was sitting up on the edge of a, on the edge of a bank like this, just completely in relief. This process had fallen onto the ground and I had to pick it up. It was loose. Um, but other than that, it was just, it was just, I could see exactly what it was. And, uh, and you know, this one was really, uh, quite nice. It's the ones that are, that are, um, where you only see like a small little bit of it and you're digging in and there's a lot of rock and there may be a lot of, uh, bone debris and that sort of thing. If it was a high energy sort of a situation like a river where things were getting rolled around and mushed up in the gravel. Um, it was, um, they can be very messy <laughs> and more than, more than once I spent 45 minutes carefully digging up a rock. <laughs>